Gene, Gene will be here. joining us. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Whenever you are. All right. <coughs> Call this meeting a CPDC to order. Um, so, do you have a, I guess, a couple things? One is before we start, um, or the only thing on the agenda is um, zoning bylaw amendments? Yep. Um, so, just so that we can set the right context. Mm -hmm. um, where do we, where should we get to tonight for each of these? And then how many more? Like, uh, um, so, so, I so we know how figured far figured most of the night would be spent doing the mixed use regulations. We can quickly review the others if you so wish and have any other notes or material to add to them. Um, but most of the night will probably be dedicated to the mixed use and defining exactly what we want and in terms of numbers, setbacks, everything like that, uses that could be allowed that aren't currently allowed in the zone and really getting forward with having the permanent language down there that we would like to see and go forward with at our public hearings, which will be held in June for this. So I would imagine we could get through almost all of it tonight, depending how much time we want to dedicate to it. But um, OK. So that being said, should we start on the others? Yes. Or do we? I, is there anything specifically that Gene wants to be a? I think more just the mixed use okay. aspect right. of it. So just to see where we're at and where we're going with that. Um, but as it relates to the others, we can just go down the list. Sure. The CBD hemp again will be run by town council at town meeting, and what we have right now is two options that we'll be showcasing. Um, option one, which would permit hemp and CBD to be an allowed use, I guess, um, by definition, where currently it's not, but it's vague. And the other option is to exempt it outright so it's not so vague. Um, we currently have a few businesses, including the Year CBD store that we approved their sign, selling CBD and using it at the health center and the CBD place and probably a few others, few and far between. So depending how that vote goes, there will be some enforcement, maybe some enforcement needed if it's exempted. Um, but town council will take the control on that one and I didn't have any issues with the way they wanted to go about it by allowing the definitions. So these are so it'll be two different items. I think we've did that done that before where there's two items and each one gets a its own individual vote. Mm -hmm. Is that the approach, do you know? You could do it that way or you could select one. You being this board, we're not. <laughs> I guess that's why that's why I was asking. Is that is that it? Right. There's two options here. At some point, someone's going to either select one or put them both on the warrant. Yep. Right. And that decision to do that, which approach is not going to be this board. That's a statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless we're told otherwise. So the way I thought it was going to go was both would be on yeah. the warrant. Yeah, could do and then yep. Or if there was a strong feeling that one was the feeling that the board, you know, wanted to go yep. with just the one, you could do it that way too. Mm -hmm. And then if they vote the first one up or down, that would either require you to take the vote on the second one, or you could table the second one, there would be no vote. Great. Right. 
I would make it as simple as possible. It's not going to be simple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, for one thing, the, the, the wording of the, the option one and, and option two it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, necessarily. <laughs> So right now our marijuana definition technically excludes hemp and CBD. That's why in option one he broke it down into two different definitions. Okay, the, <coughs> the thing is that the, the two proposed definitions don't seem to be uh, mutually exclusive or, or distinctive. I mean, it's, they define hemp uh, as basically stuff without the THC. Mm -hmm. and, but they uh, talk in the marijuana about mature stalks of the plant, fiber produced from the stalks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which, if anything, looks like it should belong in the first definition. It's, it's, I would expect it to be, you know, one saying that the hemp is the stuff with no THC and the marijuana is the stuff with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's much simpler uh, distinction between the two. But I'm not town council. So. Right, so I can ask town council if that's more of a boilerplate definition or not, or if there's others we can go with and try to word it a bit differently. Um, I think just the main goal was to get the hemp with that does not exceed 0.3% definition in there. But, let's see you. Show me that hand from the hell. And that's a lot of blood work. Um, has our council or um, the Board of Health provided any input or thoughts on this regulation. I realize that it's THC exclusive, so might be not So we did have a meeting. Um, believe our discussion was to find if it went one way or another who would be the enforcer and there's still some follow-up needed on that it looks like and then there's also I believe it was town council or the board of health that mentioned that hemp is regulated and it could be a um the chapter three sit over amendment that it could 48. be Section three, yep. That it could be protected under that. that, yeah. yeah. No. A store? Maybe on a farm. Right. Making it. I mean, if they're harvesting it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry, you're, you're looking at notes from a meeting. What meeting? This was on the 24th where just some town staff met to discuss how to go forward with this and when to do enforcement, etc. So I'm seeing option one as being permitting hemp and CBD, mm -hmm. and then option two being permitting hemp, CBD from hemp, including cannabis and dicta derivatives. I don't know anything about what it. What is it? It says including. No. Oh, prohibiting all. Okay. Yeah. So those are the two options. Yes. Even when it's present in town already. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There are 
there's some new stores and then there's some existing stores that are trying to put signs up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think the answer to your question is no. No. Simple <laughs> 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 answer. Um, and, and I'm not sure how this is moving, um, who's really spearheading this in the sense that would have those meetings. I mean, I guess we, we should, um, uh, when we have our public hearing on these, you know, get our CASAs and others input. Um, mm -hmm. They were at the meeting. That, were they at the yeah. meeting? All right. Board of Health was at that meeting, right? Uh, or invited? I think our health agent thing, was there, yeah. but I'd have to double check. Right. But I know for a fact our castle was there. Yeah. Okay. I know Laura was there. Yeah, Laura was there. Okay. Other questions, comments? Well, on option one, it as the title says, it's confusing because under marijuana, it's every compound manufactured salt derivative, da, 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 and except for any other compound manufactured salt derivative mixture or preparation of the mature stocks, it covers it the same way both times. It is somewhat confusing on what's covered and what's not. I didn't know if there was a cleaner way to say if it has the tetrahydrochloride THC, mm -hmm. it's covered, and if it doesn't have it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the. If there's going to be a challenge mm -hmm. or conflict, it's going to be on exactly that issue. Right. So it, it needs to be clear. I mean, absolutely clear. So I think our input back to town council mm -hmm. is that we. Um, went through a painstaking process to try and make our zoning by bylaw um, more reader friendly and clear and this does not <laughs> does not meet that their lawyers of course are going to write something like this but maybe there is a um, mm -hmm. uh, a more simple yeah, way and that I can, gets to yeah, that or some other town gets definitions to the same, yeah that's sort of aside from the whole issue at hand of whether CBD mm -hmm. should be um, right. uh, permitted in town yeah. or not. But so even then, right? So this is to permit, this first option would be to permit CBD products. Yep. And so when, a, when an applicant comes forward with a very clear, this is a CBD product. Yes. That's easy for the, the permitting department. Yeah. But then when it's some other product, how do they know? They're not they don't. Right. They're not botanists. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what they need about. But that's the idea. I think you're right. We make up these two options. One is to permit it, and so we have to word the definitions properly. The other is to prohibit it with everything else that goes along with the plant and let town meeting, I guess, decide. And the public hearing would have them. Yeah. Those are the pay yeah. People. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'll reach out to town council and try to get a clearer definition. Also mentioning THC here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we also caution him that we don't want to prohibit rope. For example, <laughs> it's already prohibited. It's already prohibited. Yeah. And they outlawed it back in whatever year it was. They prohibited all those hemp products, so you're not getting those kind of products still. It's like really. Wishy washy, one yeah. you can and can't get that stuff. You know, hemp fibers for clothing, rope, and all that. Okay. It's, it's very messy. That's I missed, what, I missed yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. There was something on the radio today, they were, they were saying how the revenue is down from this because they didn't start on the day they were supposed to. They weren't ready to start on the day they were supposed to. <laughs> you know, they, they had no legislation, they had no rules, they had no committee. They just kind of did a citizen's position and said go. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah. it's still messy because it's. it's Federal rules versus state rules. Stupid. The only other question for town council is, what if neither motion passes? Well, then, then, then there's no change. Then you make them understand that there are businesses in town that are operating against the rules that are in place right now. 
Okay. We've been told that the rules as they're written, the zoning as it's written, doesn't allow it. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of, we're trying to resolve it before we just tell people to leave. Mm -hmm. Right. I believe when we open the public hearing, that doesn't, that allows us to not take enforcement on those businesses. So we've had the discussions and now we're going to open the public hearing, which will keep them protected until we pass one way or taken. Hmm. All right. All right. Okay. Lots in two districts. Julie had recommended just erasing the last sentence. We had discussions on if we wanted to make a statement that items such as the DSGD overlay could extend um, as well, but I believe it, at the time we felt that we didn't need to state as such. Yes. Now are we discussing footnote one or lots in two districts? Lots in two districts. Oh. Sorry. Um, we saw in in the town of Weymouth they had stated in cases of lots with split zoning overlay district shall intend extend over entire lot so I don't know if we want similar language or if we feel that that's sort of inside. Well, my concern has always been May versus, will versus May. Um, and that was my concern about the, um, the water aquifer protection district, mm -hmm. where you want to make sure that it doesn't force the overlay district on top of the rest of your lot, unless you want it to. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a, this is a May, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We should keep the sentence that it shall not apply to the aquifer protection district. Right now, the way it's written basically says that if there's a line dividing the lot, a, a, zone, a zoning district boundary line, the zoning that's on the street side of the lot could be extended 30 feet beyond that boundary line. Right. So if the property was, there was, there was only 10 feet there, then it would it would cover the rest of the property. If mm -hmm. it was 50 feet, then right. the remaining 20 would not be covered by this zone. Right. So that's the first part. And the existing language excluded this for multifamily and for the aquifer protection mm -hmm. district. Meaning what? That the aquifer protection district stopped at the district line? Mm, yeah. I yeah. take it that the mm, aquifer yeah. protection could not be extended. Could not, could yeah. not be extended. Yeah. Could not be. Um, could not be overridden. Is I think what the intent would have been. Says, I mean, it says if right. you're in the if you're in the Aquifer overlay. The S15 couldn't yeah. take place over. You can't override that restraint. Right. So if the Aquifer Protection District is on the other side of this boundary line, the district that we're trying to bring up from the street couldn't extend over the district line 
into the aquifer protection? Um, provisions that were restricted by the aquifer protection could not be extended. I guess. But I think the argument was that if aquifer was on the street side, yeah. you wouldn't want to extend it. As a property owner. Right. But now I think we're talking about the inverse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That we were trying to protect the aquifer protection district right up to the boundary line. Yeah. Not allowing something to cross over it. Right. You so can't put a septic on the back of the property. Right. Now, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And so if you have a use that's not allowed in the set in the aquifer protection district, um, this it, by deleting it, aren't we then saying that we could actually move that use in 30 feet into the aquifer protection district? Right, right. Which we don't, don't want to do because that line is a line. Right. It's a, a physical, um, there's a reason why it's established exactly where, where it is. Right, and that aquifer protection district may very well cross district boundary lines. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's twenty and S15 yeah. or something might have that line in. Yeah, that's what I was trying to understand there. So I understand what it was doing for aquifer protection, but why wasn't it applying to multifamily housing? And again, is this so that you can't extend multifamily housing beyond a district line? It must be right. It can't be about yeah. right. Yeah. So taking, taking that protection away, um, I mean, if a 40B or a 40R wouldn't have to respect, a 40B wouldn't have to respect the district. Right. right. Uh, a 40R. Well, a 40R, the 40R district doesn't get extended, does it? Because that's, well, well it, it goes back to that discussion is an overlay, does right. this apply does to overlay apply? districts? Because right. mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then the 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 40R, uh, you, you can't extend the 40R beyond. It's a district. Yeah. I'm trying to think if we have any <coughs> lines on the 40R. I can't think there of is that. There's two, there's like two properties. On yeah, we do um, down behind uh, Washington Arms, maybe. Yeah, or, uh, yeah. Over okay. here somewhere. Okay. Yeah. A couple of those properties that are not exactly on the line. Okay. The side of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, behind Mission Deeds, maybe. Mm-hmm. So that's where it would <coughs> potentially come into play. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean, if we change the wording, we could probably make it. A lot easier. Um, because it says this provision shall not apply to any lot. Um, and there should be a way to reword it more simply, saying that the shall not apply to the aquifer protection district, for example. But we just say it does not apply to overlay districts, period. The, the, real, the, the reason why this came up was really more about... Um, uh, I believe the multifamily aspect of it. Because multifamily isn't allowed use in business A, but this provision didn't allow them to extend that. 30 feet back. Allowed in business right. A. And then there was language that didn't allow them to take advantage of this. That's what well, yeah, because, because of this clause. Right, because of yeah. that sentence. Well, I mean, 
mean, we're taking up a mixed use um, zoning, right? Yeah. It's a mixed use overlay. Yeah. For the business side. Not an overlay. What's that? Not. An it's just a mixed. It's a mixed use. Um, uh, use. New use. Okay. So yeah. it's a new use, right? Mixed use. Um, Which is really what we want for those properties on uh, um, along there, not to make multifamily m m uh, more prevalent. More prevalent. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm saying we could deal with the, the edges, right? The back edge is what we're concerned about on mm -hmm. those lots. We yeah. want to make sure we have the right buffers and the right setbacks and all mm -hmm. that. So maybe we do that here and we leave this the way it is. <coughs> And this still applies, except not for multifamily and not an aquifer. So, should don't change that at all, because I do think that the we we need to have it still apply for aquifer protection district, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's we required. We want that because it's we need to preserve that. So the question is, the multifamily to um, component, do we want to continue to exclude that? I, I'm not so sure I I'm, I'm can think of a good reason or have heard of a good reason why why we want to encourage that um, additional leeway for multifamily. I'd rather work it in, as Nick said, to the mixed use. So leave that. I'm yeah, for leaving yeah, it the I, way it I is. I guess I don't remember... Julie's argument for it, for deleting that language. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> the other thing, just to to raise the uh, cadavers from the distant past, Aquifer Protection District was when we still had our own water treatment plant. You know, it, it's I think still required to we're still we're required to have it by by the state law. Yeah, um, I think it's part of the DEP agreement. Okay. We still have drawing rights, right? How do we get those up? I think we still have them. But we have wells for emergency draw. Yeah, but I think it's yes, part okay. of that overarching agreement that we're required to have it. We spent a lot of time on this years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. So we might reword this to say. Um, Some say that it doesn't apply to the aqua protection. <laughs> yeah. well, it does say that, doesn't it? Right, it does. Yeah. It shall not apply to any lot. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, any lot used for multifamily or the aqua protection district. This provision shall not apply. Yeah, I suppose if we're allowing business A to do multifamily we define the setbacks that we want and everything that we don't need. But that's a perfect example of why you would need this. Because right. if you let business A do multifamily and business A has the line dividing the lot, it's no longer business A. You're now into... You're 30 feet into the whatever the residential district is. Right. right. Mm -hmm. S15, yeah. S15. Do they all fit S15? Mm -hmm. Well, there's an A40... Few and far between, but primarily S15. I mean, actually, this applies anywhere, not just right. Yes, right. Yes. So yeah. you're protecting the rest of the town. I guess you could see that there might not be enough room on this lot without that 30 feet to do the development that we would like to see. Right there. Yeah. The Calvitas? I mean, yeah. Uh, this is... Under? Is that the empty Bank of America? Right there. That's Bank of America, yep. Yeah. So, uh, it's the Gray's, Gray's Auto? Yeah. And then their lot was at D. Isn't that Enterprise? 
Um, you know, that's not a dangerous lot, really, this conservation stuff back there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, does this really just tie in with this, um, with the way that the mixed use is, um, is written so that you can use the whole lot? Okay. Well, it's not even the whole lot. It's only 30 oh, feet. Oh, 30 feet. You can use more of the lot. Right. It allows you to use whatever the street district's dimensional criteria are, 30 feet beyond yeah. the, the lot line. Hmm. Did 107 Main, I vaguely remember this, with the Sam's Bistro, I wasn't here for that. But did that get the benefit of this zoning? No, no specifically they were restricted from putting additional parking back in that little one spot. So Sam's Bistro came in before we allowed the 15-foot setback. Uh, it was yeah, still, still a 50-foot. 50 50-foot or so. Yeah. He had to push the building all the way back. Okay. Yes. And then they, they weren't allowed to put anything behind okay. between there. Just some employee target yeah. or something. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that was unfortunate. He could have had to have been further away from the residents. But that little jog right there, they would like to use for employee parking. Hmm. But because it's residential, they're not allowed to use it. Right. So what is it, the snow? The snow tank or something? Yep. It's now La Cucina, I think. So we were just slightly to do whatever. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I'm, I, I think that we table oh, for this seals. for the moment yeah. because if if the purpose of this is to tie it into um, into the what we allow for mixed use, let's keep that in mind as we go through here. And maybe there's instead of striking this whole thing for multifamily housing, maybe there's actually something that we add that that um, limits that uh, or that um, precludes that preclusion to <laughs> multifamily. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, to uh, mixed use, uh, a mixed use structure. But they're distinct, right? Multifamily housing and mixed use are two different things. Right. So we should come back to it yeah. just to make sure yes. That, yes. We don't, that we let mixed use take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Because I guess I'll say I'm not all that sure that we want to um, allow multifamily that extra 30 feet just in and of itself right. all around town right you know I, I i think we have that for a reason mm -hmm. um i can see it in this particular mm -hmm. um Lots setting but i agree mm -hmm. so there's another way of getting there so i think there is another side of this yeah. day or something yeah. so we'll come back table that yeah, yeah. Well, we could, if, I mean, we could simplify the wording, just say, should not apply to any portion of a lot uh, which falls within the Accord Protection Overlay District. <laughs> we don't want to give multifamily housing this benefit. Right. It was put there for a reason, I remember. Yeah. Okay. Could say something like outside of business A, or so, but we can take that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's better yeah. go to yeah, a go yeah. Yeah. Different, different route. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do we want to quickly run over footnote one again? <laughs> Sorry, I skipped <laughs> that one. that the conversion increases the gross floor area. And that 
provided that the conversion does not require. No, it's it's at the back end of the sentence, right. unfortunately. By yeah. no yeah. more. Increases by no more. So we could potentially move the by no more than 10%. Right. Provided that the conversion increases the gross floor area by no more than 10% of the structure existing to date of application. Oh, it's just messy. Right. does not increase the gross floor area by more than 10%. Yeah, I mean, basically, if you just apply your your English teacher hat yeah. and say, provided that the external appearance of the single family dwelling is retained and that the conversion does not increase the yes. gross floor area. It's all well and good, but what gets me is the, the date of the application. Right. I have my house that was built in 1920 that had the eight rooms. Let's say it's 2,000 square feet. I have enough room, I expand that to 4,000 square feet. Then I go for an application to say, I, now I'd like to convert it into a two-family. That's what we were trying to prevent, right? right? Right. So I thought this was written to prevent that. It's not so too. I'm questioning if we've got the right version. It's no, that's right. Existing at the date of, of application or for conversion. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Existing on the date is the 42 date, right? 1942 date. Right. Mm. Right, it should be on but. Excuse me. Do you have that? You can put it up on the screen, please. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting bits and pieces. Just hard to. <laughs> it's hard enough with it in front of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so if if they if they uh, the way that it's written, mm -hmm. if you did take you originally yeah. had a had a 2,000 square foot house. Yeah. You, sometime in, you know, in like 2000, yeah, in, in 2002. 1950, you, whatever. Yeah, 1950, it doesn't matter, right? You, that house was expanded to 4,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you apply to use this after January 1st of 2020, you can only increase it by 10%. If you uh, apply to use this provision any time between now mm -hmm. and January 1st, 2020, you can only increase it by 10% in of the date that you applied. So could someone slip in? You'd have to work pretty quickly. So once we have the public hearing, once we schedule the public hearing, this is in effect. It's the the date that the me notice appears. The legal ad. That's the clawback provision. I do not wish to argue with you. However, I believe it's a little different. I believe for zoning amendments, it is the date it is passed at town meeting, and for. Uh, regular bylaws, it will be the date of the notice. That's that's true, except for there's a clawback provision mm -hmm. under Mass General Law. Okay. And that's what claws back to the public mm -hmm. hearing stage. Now, people can go at their own peril because it may go to town meeting and not happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will, will do that. It's a very okay. high standard to pass zoning. So it's a little squishy. Yeah. All right. No, no. I defer to you. I <laughs> As I said, I do not wish to argue. <laughs> well, it gets it gets very cloudy. As with everything. <laughs> <laughs> How big are you saying this is going to get? Ten. We had some discussion about how big we thought it should get. This is no more than ten percent of. Whatever it is, it, it's it's essentially whatever it is today. Right. Okay. Okay. As long as we're clear on that. 
But the other parts of it apply. It had to have existed prior to 1942 and have eight rooms. Yep. Regardless. So if it's got 20 rooms now, it had to have had at least eight rooms. Back in 42. Yeah. And this is the one where we thought there were about 900 properties that mm -hmm. kind of, sort of, maybe qualified. Mm -hmm. And this is only business A? No. Nope. No. Nope. All of town. <coughs> so why is first few words in a business oh, A district? Because there are two. There's two. There's two. There's there's two yeah. And then if he scrolls up. Oh, 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 oh. oh. In a residence. So, okay. Yeah, I was looking the same only at that one. Yep. Yeah, so we have two tables for dimensional criteria, one for business and mm -hmm. industrial and one for residential. And it repeats down in the residential paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. It's exactly. it just as a residence district. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, business and industrial allows multifamily and the residence district does not. Typically. Are we putting the 10% limit because before there wasn't a limit and they could build as much as they could cover the lot? So it's exceeding 10%? Well, I think that we agreed that this gets back to the original intent that we understood was, sure, when you convert from single family to, mm -hmm. to um, and two family, you may need to make some alterations, right. mm -hmm. but a 10% wouldn't change dramatically right. the the character. Yeah, this is supposed might to change dramatic. the character, but right. two family houses in one single family districts, except for these say smaller right. mm -hmm. conversions. And the good part about giving a grandfathered time frame, anybody who's thinking about it will be motivated to move forward. Or okay, not. So did, we yeah. Yeah. did we decide that we wanted to change it to be a negative sentence? Conversion does not increase. Or do we want to leave it with her? I prefer the negative sentence. I think it's cleaner. Can we craft mm -hmm. that a little bit so see what it looks like? You want to say maybe converted into a two-family dwelling that the conversion increases by not more than 10% up here? Uh, no, we said the conversion does not increase. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in a PDF. That's why you can't edit it. You need no, the Word document. PDF. <laughs> it's a technical thing you wouldn't understand. Does not increase the growth for area of the structure by more than ten percent of the existing. No, of the dwelling existing on the date. Say here under or on January first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's either the date of application or on January twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. 
Trivers earlier. Okay. So you can get rid of the legalese here under? Yeah. <laughs> Forthwith? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get rid of the here under. Yeah. Yeah, I think that works too. So we could just copy that down mm -hmm. other than the residence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, one other correction for this. Uh, as per Nick's comment the last meeting, uh, the note should go to two right. to family instead of one. Yep. And that mistake came through when we redid the zoning bylaw um, to make it more readable. <laughs> Originally, at least in 2005, it was a uh, principal use, its own little section. So it was added underneath the uh, <coughs> permitted uses as a footnote. I'm sorry, say that again? Originally it was? Originally it was its own section of the bylaw as oh. under principal use. Gotcha. And we moved it to a footnote underneath the table. And the footnote was applied to the Single family, single family instead of a two family. Right, because it's not the district, it's the use. Right. And the two family use is foot allowed under business A and then residential S15 2040. Is there any incentive to change two family to a special permit yeah, in the business? It needs to be the SPA. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, the original no. language is no. And we are going to allow it by special permit under footnote one. Um, in both residential and commercial? She had only proposed in residential. I would think we would want to propose special permit in both. So, yeah, except that if you put special permit in there as the use, right, to right. me that implies that a special, you, forget about this. Right. I can just go for, apply for a special permit for, um, for a two-family dwelling in a um, in any of those right, residential districts, yeah. and I don't think that's right. We that's a whole different <laughs> that's a whole different discussion. Right. I think we you need to have the 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 no with the footnote that says you can get a special permit. Okay. Or the just like it says in. The business industrial districts, it's a yes, but the footnote is just at the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that we keep it, these tables, the way they originally were, mm -hmm. except moving the footnote from single family to two family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You say no in both, though? No, we say yes. We in say business. yes in business. Oh, this is business up here. That's right. So, in business A, what is preventing me from knocking down a single family home and putting it into the, making it a two family home? Anything? Or multi family. No, nothing. Nothing. Well, you really don't even need this footnote in business A. We need it for anyone who in business A who wishes to convert instead of tear down, I guess. But if I can no. build a two family, no. I can convert. No. Maybe this is where the confusion set in. Yeah. Do you want two family in business A? No, it's currently allowed by right. Right, but in business, well, yeah, for a two-family, 
So <coughs> if we allow to the family, then tomorrow, if you had a single family, you could just convert it to a two convert family, it to a two family. Yeah. and expand it beyond ten percent, double yeah. the size within the dimensional mm -hmm. limits of the and law. There's no issue there. Yeah. yeah. There's no minimum square feet area for a two family dwelling in business A. Uh, well, I mean, your lot size and setbacks and coverage, right, would... would uh, right, would but lot be. size is not available in there. Not applicable? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Plus the 30-foot extension. Mm -hmm. Can't do multifamily extension. Oh, well, you can right now, I guess, right? So two-family is not multifamily. Right, but it's just a two family. Yeah. says that? Can you go up 45 feet with a huge lot? Uh, for two family. For two family. Yeah. Two family can be side by side townhouses. Yeah. yeah. So that's about three and a half stories. Probably about 36 feet. Put a garage underneath. There you go. Nobody wants to, if you're building on a clear lot, though, nobody wants to walk up a flight of stairs to their first floor. They're doing it on Lake Eaton. Mm -hmm. They have site geography that makes them do that? It's 40B. Well, you don't care about 40B. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care about the residents. Mm -hmm. They're building 12 or don't care about very the residents. Tall. This is because they're putting the garages underneath? Uh, garages yes. 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 But they're tall. Oh, yeah. So the question comes, do we need this footnote at all? Well, that was the uh, original discussion yeah. was for, well, getting rid of for, this. <laughs> for the, the 532, which is the residence di districts, I think the answer is yes. But for 531, which is the business and industrial, I think the answer is no. I, I'm with you. I don't think, I don't think it serves any purpose. Right? Yeah, just eliminate yeah. The, the footnote from table 531 because mm -hmm. it's unnecessary. Okay. So let's proceed that way. Um, why don't you um, think about that? Yeah. <laughs> think about that and see if we're, see if we're missing something. Unintended. Yeah. Unintended, yeah. But right, the direction is we really don't need the footnote for, for 531. We can right. strike that. Mm -hmm. um, Leave it for 532, leave it yep. the way that you just edited it. Yep. And that in that case, it should be yes, no in the table, right? Yep. Yes for single family dwelling, no for two family dwelling, but just move the, the footnote yep. from, from single family yep. to two family. And erase it from yeah. business. And then we can ponder that a little bit and mm -hmm. think if right. we're missing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
answer to Bill H. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, why didn't we come up with that right away? <laughs> I don't know, but. <laughs> I guess we got there, though. We were having yes. trouble trying to figure out why we yeah. want to keep the note. Although I think town council's opinion was to get rid of it entirely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, moving along. Take it. <laughs> right into mixed use. Mm -hmm. Start with the use regulations and then intensity. I guess we can just go line by line. Sorry, it's a little light on your print. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll start off by saying, okay. I'm not so sure that elsewhere in the, uh, in our, zoning by law, do we reference things as projects? Um, right? We either have uses or structures or buildings. Um, and I think the, I, the reason why project is in here is that the whole idea is that it could be a development with more than one structure. Right. And um, I, I guess I'm going to challenge us on that um, in the sense that uh, um, I'm having a hard time envisioning where that where that would occur as we look at the at where this may be permitted. Thanks. But second, the other thing to think about is that um, is the uh, very real possibility that um, that some developer will come in and and propose this um, two buildings. Build the um, build, do it in phases. Build the residential. Never build the commercial. I was down. I was at a planning board meeting in Texas where that was happening all over the place. Mm -hmm. They were all fed up. Okay. Well, um, when you say never build the um, business, are you mean never opening a business there, or or just not even putting in the two thousand square feet minimum? They have zoning in Texas. <laughs> 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 what? They, they do. They, they don't in Houston. <laughs> what is that big chemical explosion? Because that was like a chemical plant in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Uh, that was, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that was in Houston. No that was outside of Houston. Houston. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> this was outside of Dallas. Um, uh, actually, some pretty progressive zoning, which is why I was down there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I guess the yeah, my fear is, or the, the thing that we need to think about is if it's if we're allowing projects with two buildings, um, someone will likely um, propose to to um, uh, to phase it, and you never get the second phase, um, and then knowing that the sort of the environment that we that we're talking about here are th do we <laughs> are two buildings even feasible even a and given our given our um, definition of structures if they're more than 20 feet apart then we might end up just one structure anyways Make just a couple of thoughts so you know, there could be a building on the front and another building, you know, behind it or something. This one would have the commercial base and a residential above, and that might be all residential. That's what I keep thinking. Um, so it's two buildings. The first building is true mixed use, and the other part is all residential. Unless you get a really big development that can uh, that can get rid of commercial on both sides but then you know the back building doesn't have yeah uh, I guess they could go parallel perpendicular to the street which you know might work potentially or a u-shaped structure and we're considering <coughs> this for business a and mm -hmm. business C so I guess that's where I challenge that whole notion mm -hmm. is <laughs> 
what parcel um, is going to house? Um, is, would someone come in and sort of want two different buildings um, where where it's oil residential oil and oil commercial and two different buildings? Well, potentially, right? That's the. Um, Dynamic Sports is actually both those those two lots are one owner right now. Mm -hmm. Dynamic, right? What it's called? Yeah. Yeah. And the house next to it. So it's like three properties yeah. 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 all together. Okay. It, so it could happen. But getting back to your first point about the definition, you were just saying you don't want it to be so specific about multiple structures. Well, I think the we should clean up the simplify the definition to say mixed use and basically create a definition for mixed use. And we don't know whether it's just a structure, or multiple structures, or a project, whatever it is. So there is the definition of mixed use is what we're lacking. I too felt that because I believe here she mentions multiple uses, but then in another section she says only a mix of residential and commercial. So do we want all our mixed use to be residential, commercial, or commercial office? Can we allow? Well, commercial includes service. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're going to be picky about what commercial is on the on the first level of business A, right? Because if we can get an occupancy that's commercial, it'll have its own traffic and it's fine. Yeah. In downtown, we were sort of trying to be a little more particular about certain, um, mm -hmm. you know, businesses mm -hmm. that were more lively than just mm -hmm. a, you know a opaque glass doctor's office. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. Okay. I have a medical district, so <laughs> I think I see a bio district would be all set. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying is maybe it's not as important as that. As long as we can have a commercial component. Um, still want to get back to John's point, though. Which point? The projects? That's the definition's title, first of all. And I guess we want to make sure that there's no, in the definition, we shouldn't have dimensional criteria or, or uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So basically, mixed use is um, two or more principal uses listed under different use categories in the table of uses, period. And then you, if you want to reference the, the, the definition somewhere else. And the constraint of, you know, single structure or horizontally or vertically, I mean, that doesn't really belong in the definition, I don't think. Yeah, that should be in Use regulation somewhere. Mm -hmm. well, what about the part that says one of which is residential use? Um, if, if someone wants to come in to build a, a mixed use facility that has, you know, uh, uh, a medical facility with adult daycare, classrooms, yeah, daycare, yeah. yeah. Classrooms, all the power, and great. I, is that a consensus? I, yes, I hear yeah. that. Yeah. So it's been the residential is an enticement to get them to put the commercial in there. It, right. it, it will likely, it's likely to be right. residential, mm -hmm. but I don't think we should necessarily restrict it to residential. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the only thing, thinking that basically every, any commercial building is probably fits into a mixed-use condition. 
um, or well, if it's a multi-tenant building. If it's a correct, um, and so as we go through there, is is are we allowing anything that we wouldn't want for just any commercial development, multi-tenant right. commercial development? I, I don't think so, but right. we ought to think about that. Yeah. Want a permitted principal use? Yes. Let's say permitted principal use. Permitted by right. <coughs> okay. So right. if you strike this, strike the residential. Strike the beginning of the sentence where it says a structure or project containing. And then everything after in a mixed use structure, right? Everything after? I believe so. This is maybe in a mixed use structure, did you say? In a mixed use structure. Structure. Yeah. I'm sorry, in a mixed use project. project. They use this. No, in a mixed, mixed use structure, yeah. they use this may be combined. Previous so one. All of that, all mixed use structures or projects will require a special permit. That's in the dimension, that's in the table, right? Right. Right. I guess so that's all that goes somewhere else. Some of that. Some of that. Yeah. All of it goes away. Yeah, some yeah, of it yeah. goes somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. Fix the title. <laughs> Are you saying this is just mixed use? It's just mixed yeah. use. Use. Mixed use. Simplicity. That's what yeah. we're always looking for. Clarity. <laughs> <laughs> What did you want to fix in the title? It should just be mixed use. Use, okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. If one of the uses is a residential use, right. should we strike that? Is that permitted? I don't yeah. think so. Because we're saying any permitted residential use. Is residential not permitted? Well, actually, we're, gonna, we're only going to use A and B, C. Yeah. I a residential is permitted there, right? Um, single family with the wrong footnote and then <coughs> single family, two family and multi family. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So that's good. So I guess you, you don't need that. Well, should it be should it apply also to, yeah, to industrial? In addition to business density, right? Uh, it's probably it's not. What's industrial? Um, or the, the um, public works area? Yeah, you don't yeah, want, yeah. you don't want, you, do you don't. No. Yeah. That's going to be our best right. big hub. Yep. <laughs> Transportation hub. <laughs> Thank you. Family isn't even allowed in industrial. So then, five point. No, okay. that's right. Mm. 
No, you need to leave the district. Yeah. Okay, but the 524, so <coughs> business or industrial, okay. Yep. <coughs> Residential use not permitted in the industrial district, but. Right. So, is it, I think the gist of this is that um, certainly we don't want the clause if one of them, one of the uses is a residential use, um, then it's called a mis mixed use structure. Right, but the point here, though, I think is that um, any lot or structure within business, within a business district that does contain principal, multiple principal uses is considered a yes. mixed use yes. mm. but really to your to to the point though is that um, is that we're then almost defining every multi-tenanted building right. <laughs> as a mixed use development Is there a problem with that? I don't know. No. Only if we require a special permit for mixed use every time. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Yes. No, why? It have to be. It would have to be multiple principal uses. Right. In a multi-tenant building, not just. Uh, okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. The building is all offices. Yes. Yeah. Floor, which is okay. Floor. Yes. Yeah. So. It could be a restaurant and office, but that's under the same business and service principal use, which right. then right. not that's zoning, not bus building, but building code takes care of the rest. Um, no, but you just mentioned everything under that primary header of business and service use. Right. That's not the way that it's written. Right. No, a mixed use would have to be something from, say, public and institution. Like a daycare and, and an office restaurant. I read it that a uh, mixed use would be an office uh, uh, retail on the bottom floor, an office on on second and third. Why? Any lot or structure within business may contain multiple principal uses. I read it as the principal uses of the bold, and that's usually how we define a change of use that if it this is the principal use business and service right right anything under there is essentially equal if somebody came to us to change um, a pizza place to a doctor's office that's not a change of use right correct <laughs> I, I know that's a way that we've we that it's been interpreted but I'm I guess I'm not sure that's the way it really is <coughs> Well, the because my principal use is whatever it is, it's right. the use yeah. right, and uh, I'm going back to listed under different use categories, and so what's my use category? My use category is a bar and a, or tavern, or my use category is a place of assembly. You don't think these are the categories, or are those the categories, or the the bolded? The way that you're interpreting it, yeah. the bolded things are the categories. Yeah. That's how I, but. Uh, which is, f which is fine. I think that works, but I. And you code it. Codify. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think that's probably a different issue, though. Mm -hmm. That's town council. Yeah. That's interpreted that yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll go with your. I, I know the, that's functionally the way you work, mm -hmm. but that may not be. <laughs> I think that's something we want to chase down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess I would would not necessarily have a definition for a use category. 
There we go. <laughs> These are the categories, but they, these are the uses. Right. That's, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying that, I mean, our, our definitions doesn't have a use comma category <laughs> definition. What is the definition? It doesn't even mention the category. It says use accessory or use principle. I'm sorry. What does the definition say? Yeah. It, there's a use comma accessory, yep. and then a use comma principle. And what is the use comma principle definition? <clears throat> An activity or a purpose to which a lot or structure is or is proposed to be principally intended. So it doesn't mention the table. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Sorry generally. for bringing it up. No, that's a good, <laughs> good point. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look more yeah. a little more research. Yeah, so. let's just, uh, right, it, you, you're exactly right. It's what's the definition of uh, use category? Because right. it's not entirely clear yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, well, just principal uses. If you remove the word uses after each of these headings and put in category, hmm. the residential category, because they're all principal uses. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And now you're categorizing them. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to say. It doesn't have to say autobody category. The header of that column is principal uses, and so a bold automotive, just automotive, industrial. That's right. how I see it. The so bold it's in the use because it's in the use column. True. And that is the category. And all of the sublines under it are the use under that category. I mean, I like the headings. It makes it easier to read and understand <laughs> what you're doing, but as pointed out, we don't say what the categories are. I, a, a normal person would look at that and say it's a category. A person trying to, shall we say, manipulate the, si manipulate the system might not. Might not. Right. right. Hmm. A class or division of people or things regarded as having particular shared characteristics. <laughs> so that's the category. <laughs> All of these automotive uses share those characteristics. Let's not get hung up on yeah. looking for yeah. right. something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got the right one. Okay. <coughs> Do you believe that last sentence, though, about the residential use? I don't want to. Because this goes back to categories, I guess. Be a different category. It contains principle, multiple principle and accessory uses insofar as each use is permitted. I think that's where you need to say in right. different use categories. Right, exactly. The uses, right, the, instead of if one of the uses is a residential use, then mixed use structure or project regulation supply should say mm -hmm. if um, the uses are in two different categories, mm -hmm. then the mixed use, then it should be considered a mixed use. Mm -hmm. Use. Right. Mixed use use. <laughs> On to uh, so just real quick while we're still there, accessory uses, which Nick's comment points out, 
does allow some uses like manufacturing and industrial operations, uh, service facility or um, etc. storage facility are allowed where they aren't allowed as a principal use. So we want to allow accessory uses. You want to be allow multiple accessory uses. District may contain multiple principal and accessory uses. Should we keep it strictly principal? Mm -hmm. I just, just want to make sure we understood the implications of it. Right. So this would be like a... Um, somebody came in here recently, right, trying to get some relief for their business, which is down over by the public works. Mm -hmm. So they probably have a shop. What are we looking at here? Multiple accessory uses. Well, I guess the question here, however, is only if those. I'm, I think it's a limit. It's it's irrelevant. What this sentence is, what this section is getting at, is what falls into a, a mixed use category, right? If it's an accessory use, it's allowed. It's already allowed, right? Right. One principle, multiple. Yes. Yeah. If um, if you have pr m more than one principal use, um, I guess why do we even need to to mention the accessory use? Because it's all about the. It's all about. It's a mixed use. They contain multiple as. principal uses. Right, and if we're going to define mixed use as a principal use, yeah. or so every principal use can have an accessory use. So, an electrical shop could have a small storage building and yeah. a small garage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the next, you know, so there's a welding shop, there's yeah. an electrical shop, and they can each have accessory buildings with them, mm -hmm. or accessory uses with them. So do we need to mm -hmm. state that, though? No, I'm just saying that they're allowed to have it. That's yeah. all. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, commercial use, it might have uh, either a storage building mm -hmm. or a garage, storage garage. And then the mixed residential part of that would have garages, and they might be detached. You know, I'll chunks yeah. of woods. Yeah. So that's okay. I don't even think we need to call it out. In no, that. no, I don't think it's not right. Yeah. Just small, clear. Because mm -hmm. it, it actually makes it a little cloudier of like, are you talking about principal and an accessory multiple? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, there's overlap because some number of things that are allowed as a principal use are not allowed as an accessory use. Okay. Yep. Good. All right. Then, well, I had thrown this comment in there based off of some of Nick's comments in the past and some other towns that do allow these uses in a mixed right mixed use development. Um, I'm sure Nick could elaborate more on how hot this trend is in the research facilities, but if we allow that use, it's just giving opportunity to more business, in my eyes, that could go within the business A. Yeah, the only thing I would add to that is, as far as building code concerned, R&D 
labs or but like offices. Mm -hmm. um, the actual manufacturing facilities are manufacturing, so there's business out there on factory industrial lab. Um, Uber doesn't allow BSL 3 or BSL 4 labs. Uh, if you don't know what that means, that lab that BU built where they're handling like deadly viruses. I was going to say biohazard. That's a BSL 4. Okay. So that's the highest hazard. I don't think we want that. And if Wolverine's not allowing BSL-3, you know, we probably mm -hmm. shouldn't either. Most of the research R&D stuff is BSL-1 and then maybe BSL-2 sometimes. BSL-3, it's going to get real tricky for us to understand. <laughs> for our health people to understand that. It's already tricky. <laughs> yeah, it's just a level of biohazard that's involved right. in what they're doing. If any. Uh, okay. So if we stay, somehow, if we're going to allow yeah. this kind of facilities to come in, we have, have to decide to stay, you know, what level you want to stop at. Right. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. I guess I could dig up the Wolverine code and see where they put it. I can, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check out the that up. I know I had to look that up recently, so I just decided to get specific about it. You know, this, this is, is what we're talking about, replacing the no with an SPP? Or, I mean, it's just... I imagine that we'd rather it be an SPP instead of just an outright yes. I agree wholeheartedly. Um. I, I guess my question on this is, is that an entirely different discussion? Right. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I'm, I, I don't get away from the excuse. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I mean, I think that part of the reason why we, why it was no before it was just sort of not, um, not knowing. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, it says life science right above it, so they could just tell, they could say that they're falling into that. Um, but but to me, this has this has less to do with mixed use. Mm -hmm and more to do with just should we be mm -hmm. should we be expanding our category of uses mm -hmm. with the appropriate um, uh, limitations. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Scratch that thing. So what was the change to the uh, line above it? Life science facilities. Life science is a no right now. Still. Really? Yes. Yeah. But if we're allowing these in business C, all three of these are allowed in business C, but not A. They're all allowed in business C. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is no business C. <laughs> <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it exists on paper, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. what is it, REI, the REI building? I what think that's the business B still. That's still business B. Yeah, okay. So what are you a piece of business C? No, I think it's business B. Yeah. Business B, right? Yeah. REI, well, REI, REI yeah. 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 Yeah, business C yeah. is just a little just part the of, um, yeah. It's just the Johnson Woods piece. Yeah. And that's Johnson Woods. Uh, sorry. Reading. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. But it's also the, the unusable stretch on the other side of the highway. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's industrial. Yep. That's industrial. Yeah. Oh, it's the, um, it, you yes. know, the one building. <laughs> Right, it's the uh, it's a realtor building. Well, it's all still down here. You're saying right, right. but what was re which was just redeveloped. Yeah, no, that's not coming anywhere. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There is yeah. no business. There is no yeah. It's business it's business B. B. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was. Hmm. And it just for your information, business A is back yeah. up on Route 28. Yep, yeah. we have a little business A here. As yeah. I was saying, you know, the mixed use, there's no sense in saying that it's going to happen. Let's see. Would they ever modify one of the buildings and put a commercial piece in the bottom? I Could they do design. that even? I mean, from a you know, <coughs> structural and systems. I don't know. No, but, I mean, low the, low for the business A, I mean, I'm not sure I understand why we would want to prohibit computer services. I mean, it's unlikely. Um, I can't believe we prohibit all these things in our industrial district. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not prohibited in industrial. Life science. 
all these industrial uses in business settings. Yeah, in business settings. Yeah. Those computer services. Yeah. Yeah. What is computer services? Computer services is data storage. Why? No. Why would we? I mean, the critical uh, I mean, critical types. Uh, Server farms. Server farms. Yeah. yeah. So it's data excluding storage. assembly or distribution activities. I guess they're trying to. I guess the idea was to use uh, to have something more active. Yeah. More mm -hmm. commercially active. Yeah. All right. All right, well, we'll have to come back to this because, um, you know, if somebody, like you said, if somebody wants to put in a commercial with a retail or retail commercial with an office as a mixed use as opposed to, say, with a residential, why would we prohibit that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like our new the mortgage company building. I mean, if they want to put something on the second floor, I mean, it's EG. Well, we can, right. we can come back to that, yep. I guess. Yeah. But, um, but I'll get rid of that for now for this discussion. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mixed use title below, it should just say mixed use then. Mixed use. Yeah. And then if you want to keep it in different space, you can do it there. So I uh, have a special permit under business <coughs> A, special permit under business C. Well, the option, I mean, do we want to eliminate this too? <laughs> I don't see how it doesn't It's never going to happen. It's not going to happen in our lifetimes. <laughs> well, if you eliminate it, you need to say what that's going to be zoned as now. Business C. Right. Say, okay, there's no more business C, so that area, what's it zoned as? Like, you know, public utilities there. No, I'm sorry. I'm We're going to have our hemp on. I think, again, that's a different <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I heard was somebody wanted to eliminate business C from the table uses. by law. No, no I'm sorry. No. The mixed use. Oh, okay. Version. We're adding it to business C. Okay. Seems like an exercise in futility because I don't know that we're going to ever see that. It is, but... It doesn't, the option? it doesn't, does it, right, does it, it there's harm. no harm. Right. Well, it's, it's I actually, mean, there, there is one, the, to me, it's the, the, that one property, the, um, retail, the realtor, um, training center property. Well, Chances or if, if, yeah. uh, Redding Woods wanted to put in a convenience store. I, I mean, I'm not saying that they ever would, but. They probably use the underlying business C. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. As a standalone, you mean, you mean when the real tourist place becomes a convenience store? No. <laughs> <laughs> or a gas station or whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would you do on the table if you didn't just leave it there? Put a, put a no? It's a no. Yeah. John's right, it doesn't hurt, but I just don't know that we'll ever see anything in there. Well, well, we want to provide flexibility. Okay. I don't want to grade it on when they never bring one in for this. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we took away the mixed use that was in downtown because no one ever used it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> ever. <laughs> no one ever used it. I'm not sure you could use it. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> Seven. Yep. So this is where I was saying she said include the residential use, which I don't know if we want to state that. The first thing we're going to do is take away a structure or a project. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, by definition. Mm -hmm. Do we do we need this? I don't think so. What's the second part say that? Not permitted in zoning districts in which we are not permitted, however, in the structure of the business district. I think we already defined it, and this note go is, where is this note? This note is on 
for mixed use but that just was f further, further defining yeah right. it's yeah this is well, it's actually yeah, yeah this is actually yeah could be I harmful don't think we need okay this. Right. Yep. yeah really mm -hmm. so again mixed use five six eight <laughs> mixed use give it a structure of process yep Um, so my comment here almost goes to back to what John was kind of getting at about the Dallas project, right? You know, we're talking about giving, conceding something for a shared parking arrangement, which could be a one-year thing. Oh, mm -hmm. Is that you that put permanent? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would completely, I agree with that. I agree with that as well. Mm -hmm. Which is essentially the the problem with shared parking is because you actually have to it, you they have to purchase those rights right, from their neighbor, mm -hmm. or the two properties have to create some kind of easement that mm -hmm. both properties have a right to yeah. somehow. It's not easy. Right? It's, it's not, not easy. Already, but if we're going to give something away, then yeah. maybe some lawyer can figure out how to make it permanent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that might end up meaning that they end up buying that parcel or buying a piece of a parcel to create parking and then lease it to the other people or something. I don't know. Right, well, the, project that we're, yes. yeah. the project that we're approving might purchase and own the shared parking, which they then lease to another parcel, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. we're not looking at right now. And then if that parcel were to come back, with a development that required shared parking. We already have it. And it would get tricky. Or it would have to be permanent. We'd have to keep leasing it. Right. Whatever, permanent. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess here's my other question on this, is that um, does it have to be without a budding property? Not the way we wrote the parking. Right. Bylaw. They just need deeded. They just need deeded rights mm -hmm. someplace. Yep. They can yeah. be off site. They can yeah. run a shuttle, right? It mm -hmm. could be two two parcels over. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Any number. As long as we, as long as when it's approved, we think it's, it's actually going to work. Right. Mm -hmm. So get rid of with any abutting property. Sure. Mm -hmm. With a permanent shared parking arrangement. And it doesn't need to be shared. I guess that's the, that. I guess that's the other thought is, what what? It could be shared parking. It could just be offsite parking. Mm -hmm. Can it be just offsite parking? Do we care? If if it works, if someone will know, but we want. Reference books to the same thing. Time out. Time out. This is. We're talking about the dimensional requirements. Right? Yeah. So this this applies only if the permanent shared parking is an abutting property. Right. So the the side yard setback doesn't apply. Right. So that's where you see that last sentence may have a zero foot setback from said abutting property because we do have language below that waivers would be right. granted for shared parking, shuttle yeah. service. Etc. Yeah. Yep, I'm with you. And I guess the are we going to change the mixed use project or structure to say mixed use development? Just to no, just mixed use, right? Just mixed use. Yeah. Well, no, you need development or project use or development. Yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah. Project is used in 10.4 Gateway Smart Growth and 10.5 Downtown Smart Growth. Project is. Project is. Yes. Yeah. Well, awkward. Yeah. Mm. It's but it development is. Development project. Yeah. Mixed, well, mixed use development because you want to get rid of the word, the structure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 
we want to keep that with any abutting property. Yeah. Then. Mm -hmm. Change twenty five percent under five six eight two to thirty percent. Just thinking, we wanted to keep it primarily more commercial. But if you if you presume that your commercial is going to be first floor first retail, floor only, yeah. right? Yeah. You're probably only going to be first floor. Probably then, unless you do office, you know, retail office, which which you know, may or may not work. But um, so, if we say thirty, then you're essentially limiting <coughs> it to um, a three-story building. Maybe. Well, with <coughs> it says unless we grant them a waiver. So. Yeah, I said, but never less than 25%. Oh, I like that. Nice. I think we're giving them something. Yeah. Do you think a percentage is the right way to go? How else do you do it? Like John's point is if it's a four story building, it's the whole first floor. For the most part. Well, I guess we, I'm trying to understand what the goal is. The goal is to have a real commercial component, right? In every 40 R that we've done so far, only Haven really has the full commercial floor. Everybody else has come in for a waiver. Mm -hmm. It just seems to keep getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But maybe that's for a reason, you know? Well, the reason for the Sunoco one is that they ran out of space, right? The reason for Gold Street is that they ran out of space, you know, because the priority really wasn't there. Right, but maybe it's, maybe it's just difficult. I mean, we've seen things come and go at 30 Haven. Some businesses not the type of commercial, yeah, for sure. But I'm thinking that there won't be as much structured parking, right? They're not. The other two buildings I just mentioned had to build structured parking, yeah. and so part of the road, part of the floor has to be opened up to get into the mm -hmm. structured parking. You can't get around it. Mm -hmm. uh, Haven Street luckily can get around it. Mm -hmm. So if they had to come in from Haven Street, we would have lost a third of the floor. No, maybe a little less, maybe a quarter. For, you know, 24 foot entrance. So if they can get around the buildings and park surface or park under the other building or park around the back, then maybe we can get a little more regular shaped commercial space. No. If you just if you put a standard in that's too high, you might not be able to achieve what you're trying to achieve here. That's my only concern. If there's another way of qualifying it to to drive this towards where you're trying to go without specifying. I mean, we could start evaluating different uses and saying, for example, a restaurant. So if somebody puts a restaurant on the first floor, maybe they can do 20% or 15%. Let's say it's, um, I don't think of what a decent footprint would be, but I mean 7,000 square feet. That's a pretty good sized restaurant. So on a 14,000 square foot floor plate, which is pretty large yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's not that bad. Yeah. <coughs> 10 or 15 percent makes sense because of a restaurant's a very different use, right? Mm -hmm. Much more active, active yeah. Kind of nice, as opposed to another coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. Another coffee shop. <coughs> coffee shop's okay, that's a restaurant. <laughs> you think we prioritize certain uses and give them better uh, or 
less strict guidelines. Isn't that where the language of a waiver comes in? That if yeah. they come in with a development underneath that, if it's the right type of development, we would grant the waiver. We can go to 25%, but I'd hate to start them giving waivers for less than that unless it was a really good project. Right. Thoughts? 25% is, I think, a reasonable number to start with the, because we do have the waiver uh, alternative. And we're really talking about business A, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Open to, yes. What we want to do is to get some activity development going on. Yeah. I hate to ask this, this question, but why would they do a mixed use if they can already do multifamily in business A? So multifamily in business A is very restrictive. You have to have 40,000 square foot lot. Uh, I guess that was really the one big restriction, yeah, 40 feet design. height. It's not feet of frontage. Yeah. And I mean, 20, uh, 15 foot sides and 20 foot front. With that split zone language not applying to multi family mm -hmm. dwellings, they didn't really have room mm -hmm. at all in business yeah. A to. Okay, so the point here is that it's easier to build, we we'll give you some breaks. You don't have as much restriction. You can still have some residential, but you would definitely have to put up a commercial, some sort of business to, to be able to get into Joe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I go with the 30 to start with. You can wave it down if you have to, but here's my fear is that they say, well, I'm gonna do a coffee shop. And we go, well, coffee shop, you can get away with 15%. It's a big enough project. You've got traffic coming in and out. We like a lot of people. And then the next thing you know, well, I couldn't coffee shop in there, but I got to put a, uh, a cell phone store. <laughs> big old rule. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, I guess yeah. Okay, 30% is, is okay. I mean, there's... So, I mean, we've seen other towns limit bedrooms per acre, units per acre, allowed density, so if we want to go that in depth to it. Well, I, I guess I don't think that we need to, to look at um, restricting density. Right. I think we have some built-in yeah. restrictions mm -hmm. on density. Um, just because the lights are small and mm -hmm. there's just not that much space. Right. Can't make it work. Right. Yeah. I think it's I think it's exactly, you know, exactly what Tony said is making sure that at the end we do get some somewhere, you know, some decent commercial development and they're not just using it as a as a tool to get, you know, the multifamily in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know if, if, if that is the driver to the kind of commercial. I mean, it's, it's a square footage, right? right? So how else do we incentivize the uses? Well, that we get to decide what the waiver is based on. Right. But as long as, under this, as long as they meet that standard for meeting the area. Yeah. And I could put any consignment shop or store anything really anything, commercial right <coughs> how do we get the uses that we want no, the, 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 we, don't we don't yeah, to some zero. degree you can't can. you can't you can't yeah i mean it depends on, on the viability of, of the use fuel under the special the permit process someone comes in with a development and they show that they're going to do restaurant and some retail very different than you know three dollar stores and a cell phone store. And maybe that happens outside of zoning. You know, mm. happens in the review. Or 
when they initially broached the subject with staff, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the board looks favorably on right. these types of uses. Or the town really likes to see We're serious them. about yeah. what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. We want a tree lawn and a sidewalk on Route 28. Yeah, it's going to help <laughs> <laughs> potentially do the parking thing, right? If the two uses are compatible, you know, the whole idea where restaurants don't really start up until a certain point, and uh, other uses maybe are people are leaving and yeah. restaurant people are coming, those kind of things. The compatibility might help them. Mm -hmm. So the business aid districts again. I know there's one by Home Goods. The other side of Home Goods. Yeah. Yep. And then there's a couple then of South Main Street. Yeah, it's just a stretch of South Main Street and Washington Street down, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Washington to South. Yeah. That was a little break. Did a little break, yeah, mm -hmm. for some reason or another. That's true. Yeah. Ash. Summer and Cross. Well, we've got the A40 in there for the... For some multi-family. And the little one on West Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh, watch. That's what they'll build. Yeah, that little dot right in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the gas station, right? Yeah. yeah, mobile station. <laughs> it's already multi-use, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. That's nice too. <laughs> that one's done. Dunkin' Donuts. Something. Well, donuts. and there's something on the second floor. Right? No, they have yeah. offices on the second floor, mm -hmm. along with the gas station and the. Uh, well, <laughs> His office is on the second floor. Yep. Yeah. So gas, convenience, and mm -hmm. office. That's nice to use. They did that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the changes. Bio. Yeah, nothing wrong with the bio. <laughs> 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 How did that get in? Before my time. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Before me, too. Thank you. It's been there a long time. Huh? We just, <clears throat> well, given. That was what? Spence Farm? No. No, no, no Spence is Spence across the road. Go find the highway. It's this little triangle. We're talking about West Street. Oh. Uh, it's been down there, that way left. Right? Yeah. Spence is uh, still exists? Right yeah. No, Russell's. No, sorry. No. Russell's, yeah, Russell's still exists, but yeah. it's, on, it's next to the other gas station on the Woburn side. Yeah. So you're going to Coles down one. Right. It's over on the other side of the highway. Come under the highway. Oh, well, 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 yeah. Okay. Where they want to put the billboard. Yes. I remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. They wanted to put the LED. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good. So the $40,000 in revenue they get from it or something, <laughs> the residents all have to stare at it. <laughs> well, that's what we can do with our, our sliver of road. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have to wait. So, where did we end up? So, I think we're good as written. 30? 30%. 30 30 yeah. Well. yeah. And so, residential component where we had 10 or more units will require affordable housing because that's kind of an easy number to digest. And 10%, 10 units yeah. Yeah. keeps it pretty easy. Um, I had added, just finding this elsewhere that other towns then did that all projects so provide a blend of one and two bedroom, but no units larger than two bedrooms will be allowed. It's one way to try to control some density, but uh -huh. if you guys don't mm -hmm. feel that's needed, then we don't need that. I'm I don't know if we can do that. I, I'm concerned I mean we talked about the last mixed use um, zoning that we had part of the reason why that failed or wasn't usable was because there are too many, too many. sort of pieces like this mm -hmm. that 
um, sort of restricted size and percentages mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. unit mix and that yeah. sort of thing. I'm, um, so I'm, uh, for that reason, I'm not mm -hmm. sure that we want to. Yeah, I'm not sure what this gets us. That's totally you know. fine. Yeah. I, so strike point four. I guess have the developer figure out what number four. Yeah. Yeah. We just saw it with gold they reduced the number of three bedroom units. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't think it was as viable. Like, I think ones and twos flip easily. Yeah. 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 It seems like so that's fast. the trend. Yeah. But they, you have to do threes in order to meet the affordability requirements. That's, that's under um, 40B. Yeah. <coughs> Mass General in Chapter 40B requires 10% of the units be three bedrooms. So. And for 40B, that's good. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to. But that's not where we are. Right? I was a little yeah. surprised to see um, um, 5683A. So the residential units shall only be located on upper floors. Oh, yeah. I meant to add something there about we're only located on the upper floor along the primary road on, on Main Street. And uh, well, you're saying you want 30% of the total gross floor area to be commercial. Mm -hmm. Right. And I thought this was just another way to reiterate no residential on the first, on the floor. first floor. And I was saying that we go back to this. If there's a lot that's big enough where they might have multiple buildings or where they might have an L shaped building or you know, well, I was thinking principles. of contours and accessibility. That means it's basically the, you've got to have an elevator or uh, some other right. uh, accessible. That's fine. If my right. point was that you just want commercial on the main street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if you if if you have right, there's a lot of um, elevation on some of those. If you're if they're going to make if they're going to use that that elevation, um, what's the what's the upper floor? The upper floor could be at ground level. The Right, I, <laughs> That's what on I'm the back side. Yeah. So to yeah to 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 Nick's point, the I think the restriction is that we don't want it on the f on the front. If they can figure out a way mm -hmm. to do to maintain the twenty five or thirty percent and still end up with some. Um, uh, some residential on the first floor, as long as it's no, not in the front. Not, yeah, not if, if we're right? if we're saying that we want we do not want residential first floor on the on the street. Yeah, find a way to say that. That's what we're just yeah to yeah. Say. yeah. We just need to add that. Yeah. We can say while fronting means. Or well, you could just go away and say you want list under commercial that and unless that you would seek a waiver the goal would be to have it on the first floor so does that no mean it's making it easier to require the first floor for the commercial then right maybe yeah. it's, maybe it's a little flows better to put it whatever you want to say in the commercial paragraph. Mm -hmm. 30% and on the ground floor unless a waiver is granted by CPDC.
whole rest of that paragraph, you're talking about the floor of the units provided in projects of 10 or more residential units as follows. That's all you're talking about in 5683. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true, but I mean the heading is residential component. Right. But you're really speaking to where you want the commercial. Yeah. But it, I mean, if they can uh, do 30% commercial on the first floor front. Except that um, the way that we've defined it, um, we may have mixed use developments that are don't have what I think we we would generally consider commercial. Right. Right? Right. So it might be some weird mix of these industrial uses and public and institutional use. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, but I still think, I, so I, I guess I'm going back is, it really is the restriction of the residential use on the, on the, primary, mm -hmm. I don't know which roadway, the, the, I don't know how we define that, but the, um, we could say Main Street or we could say, we could say Main Street, there's only one property that's off of Main Street. Right. I know what street it's on. No, it's on, uh, West. Yeah. West. Yep. That's the gas station talking ones. Everything else is on Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's building a mixed use, mixed use buildings or structures fronting portions of mixed use structures fronting on Main Street shall only have commercial uses on the first floor. So now we go back. Shall not, shall, not shall not include residential. Shall not include residential uses on the first floor. Let's wait yeah. by the CPDC. Mm -hmm. So we want to put it in the commercial, not the residential. No, I think it's a residential piece. No, it's a residential. No, no, keep it there. Mixed structure. Portions of mixed. Portions uh, in the mixed use structure, that portion along Main Street, and we can board it like this for now and yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall not include residential units on the first floor unless weighed by CPC. Mm -hmm. Let me keep thinking about that. Yeah, I'll just work on that. Julie had a comment in 5683, number three, you should specify what will not be waived. Yeah, let's think about what that is. I'm not gonna come up with that list now. No, we aren't. Let's think, of a, list. Yeah. Let's think of a list of things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, commercial percentage, you know, not less than right. 25%. Then they know up front that they're yeah. doing a potential setback. <coughs> parking, you know, portions of parking aren't going to be waived. Max up parking. Mm 
um, I like Julie pushing us to <laughs> to to, uh, to max out parking, but I, I really I have a hard time envisioning um, any development along this corridor ever being um, n not essentially auto oriented. I think we have a long way to go to get to that. Um, and, and I think that's different than downtown um, developments where there's a, there is a chance that those, um, be probably fairly likely that those will be l less auto oriented um, because of the proximity of the commuter rail. And I, I, I guess I don't know if we're, I'm selling ourselves short um, by thinking that, but. Uh, oh, I don't think so because while the local residents, right, the Reading people might walk to these places, that corridor, right, is still going to see through traffic and someone's going to want to stop to do something on the way to one point or yeah. another. Yeah. So it's all that traffic that's going through there. It's, it's got to stop. It doesn't and they're going to need parking. Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know how, I mean, I, I think that at uh, 1.25 per unit is is um, as a minimum is um, maximum. No, no, I think 1.25 as a minimum, as a minimum will order. would be a, a hard sell. Um, yeah. I think we we could and should try that, um, but certainly not as a maximum. That's my take. Too tight. I, I just don't. I, I just don't. Yeah, I don't think it's an auto-oriented, I mean, a, a, I think it's an auto-oriented yeah. corridor. This mm -hmm. is an ideal, but then there's reality. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The reality is you can't cross the street if you're walking. Right. <laughs> right. It's true. And I don't know, when. Uh, to Nick's point, I'm not sure when that's going to change. Well, I can tell you when they pave South Main Street, which they're hoping to do this summer, it's going to be an 18-month process. <laughs> it's only going to make, in my opinion, it's only going to make things faster. Once the road is smooth, it's not going to be a traffic calming measure. Speed bumps. I know. <laughs> well, they were there now. They're called potholes. <laughs> I'm being facetious. But they're everywhere. You know, the potholes are everywhere. Uh, but once is, this road of it way is paved. Is there a way, and, uh, you know, anyone that comes in, and, and I, I know it's not a way because, uh, uh, at least on the, on the state highway, that's not our thing. But, you know, all these contractors come in and put in, when they repatch the road, when they, they put, it's, it's the worst yeah. job ever. Do, can we get more control over that? That they have to come back and they, they can't, you know, they, oh. they, there's some sinkage that they can't allow or they need to come back and repave it. I'll tell you, it's I mean, because it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's bad. And it's only, I, I notice it getting worse. Um, or the, the quality well, of workmanship getting worse. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the quality goes down as the horizon for a major re reho approaches. Now, if they know that it's going to be repaved in, you know, nine months, they're going to do sh junk work. In yeah, the but I'm not sure that any of the utility guys care. I mean, no. they're just, they, the, don't, they the, know nothing. The town right? engineer it's, does hold, like, I can think of a couple of examples where the town engineer really helped the that, feet to the fire. That's good. Yeah. And it, it actually got into pretty heated. Because to your point, we, we don't want the slipshod work. We I want think our it to bylaw says that they're supposed to go sidewalk to sidewalk when they cut it, right? I, I don't know. Mm, sure. I don't know. They should. I thought it said that. But, you know, they'll just do the little strip. Yeah. Even when they do go across, they don't put enough in, and then it sort of... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so I can so. say a minimum ratio of 1.25, but then I would advise that we still have a maximum, whether it's 1.5 or if you think 2. The maximum would be 
borne out by the project, though. Yeah, right. I think we yeah. try to stay away from maximums. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a maximum, then does it really any of this other stuff matter? There's no waiving because there is no maximum. Right. No, we can waive it. We have a minimum. You have a we minimum. Could go to one ten or one point oh, if we felt that there was a shared parking arrangement. <coughs> For a minimum. For a minimum. If you want to go below the minimum. So if you leave the minimum at point five. That's a per unit. Though. That's a very different. No, wait a second. No, the second. <coughs> the second part <coughs> is be there though, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Ratio 0.5 per unit. I thought we were going to change it to provided a minimum of one and a quarter per unit. That's what I thought as well. Yeah, yeah. that's what I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe. But we can good. we can waive it if they put in, you know, car sharing service or shuttle service or whatever. I'm not sure we need to spell that all out though. Right. I mean, if they're going to come in and. Nobody's going to put up a project that has, I don't want to say it doesn't have sufficient, but says, oh, I don't need any parking whatsoever. They're not going to, if they need, if they think they're going to need two spots per unit and there's no maximum, they're going to pick two spots per unit. The only issue here would be, I guess, if they don't have the space to put in as many as we'd want. So if we say we want 1.5 per unit and they're going, well, I can get more units if I go down to one and I don't care about my people parking. And so if they go under 1.25, if they want to go under 1.25, then they're going to have to prove to us on how do they, how are they going to accommodate that yeah. demand. Uh, I'm not so sure we want to, um, we want to, listed out like this i mean car sharing services that's going to be irrelevant in five years yeah. you know um yeah i think you're uh, right you know as may a lot of this why even list it yeah well um do we want to add a requirement, a loading zone requirement of some kind, or the that's an ex uh, that's an extra yeah. section, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, this is going to make make it a little more difficult because they have parking for residential and parking for commercial. Right. And I would assume that what you're really looking at is a mixture. Assuming that some of the people have left during the day, and those parking spaces can be used by the commercial. Uh, the parking space is for commercial. Yeah, there's commercial criteria here. Yeah. One per three hundred. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I'm thinking that really you're looking at a shared parking event. Right. I think we need in here that right if you set these two, but then include in here a you know a. a a plan um, should be included that shows how um, shared on-site parking can work between the mixed, the different principal uses. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking for a parking plan. Right. Yeah. So that, right, the requirement would be 300, I mean, one per 300 for the commercial space, 1.25 for the, for the residential. Yep. Those two spaces may be used for both, but show us how you know how that's going to work. So if they need, let's call it twenty thousand square feet for parking, but they can share the parking between it, they may be able to take back five thousand that they can use for their building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I need to put concrete numbers to things. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We want to strike the list under A. Yeah. Yep. One, two, three, four, gone. Do we like those maximum and minimums for the commercial? Or do we want just. Just minimum. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say just the minimum. Because well, the economics will drive the rest of it. A minimum of one per 300. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. per 500. Because if you set a maximum on Main Street and end up with um, and end up with another bagel world, yeah. I, I don't want to be responsible for that. They need a stacking line. Yeah, I don't just parking lots all. They need to, they need to revoke the drive through permit. It. <laughs> is, that, is the business all drive through that's stacking up on the road? Yes. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. And then yeah. when that gets blocked, you can't get into the lot even if you want to. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if, if, I mean, if they need the drive through lane of. Uh, parking area. I mean, the, the trouble is that the. It's a shame they couldn't have taken the Wendy's spot to use as a drive through. <laughs> it's too logical. Well, the trouble is that they, they come into the drive through and they say, oh, I want such and such a bagel toasted with four things on it. And they're in the line for however many minutes it takes to create it. I think we could. Strike the list under loading plan, I guess, too, then. It's a little different, though. Um, but I don't know how you're going to find tenants that do not require deliveries. Mm -hmm. yeah, some of the stores will do front of the door delivery. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but it's still a vehicle. And the vehicle right. has to be off the road. Right. All right, then we can leave that. That's what my language here was saying. Pretty much, that just, you just can't stage your loading from the side. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you're on a cross street, you know, near a corner of a cross street, you don't have the truck idling there next to somebody's house for at five in the yeah. morning until yeah. they open. And they're not going to stop on Main Street. One would hope. Um, we have to police that, right? Do we have to police Main Street? 120, I mean, Route 28? It's a state no. highway. We certainly do. Yeah. But we police it. Yeah. yeah. In, the, in the daily paper, you see all. <laughs> yeah, and no, I was just thinking about that, right? We don't own it. We can't repave it. <laughs> we can't reconfigure it. But we have to police it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the public plow. safety. We don't plow it, though, do we? Yeah. I think we do. Yeah. Well then, uh, let's re re reconfigure it. <laughs> <laughs> let's put our raised crosswalks in. I try. <coughs> if, so when they start marking out the roadway, if we go out and just pull the stakes up six inches in those areas, <laughs> the guys that just stupid just like, just fall the stakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get another dime from Mass Highway, but oh well. <laughs> Uh, once it's paved, it's paved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The raised tables are not necessarily a good idea. Speed tables. Mm -hmm. So on to the intensity regulations quickly. lot width specified was, as we saw in 40 Grove, we just added that unless said frontage is on a cul-de-sac bulb. Mm -hmm. And then going down, gross floor area, and we had to strike business A districts in 622.4.1. Mm -hmm. Trying to not wish promote too much multifamily, I guess. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't know 
why she struck it in landscaped area. Um, no, let's see. That's a pretty restrictive right. item. Yeah. I mean, if you're going yeah. to take up, lots. yeah, if yeah. you're going to take yeah. up twenty five percent of your lot by landscaping mm -hmm. in business A, right. you might as well forget it. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. or mixed use downtown. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm glad that's apartment forty. Which one are you looking at? In apartment 40. <coughs> you agreeing with White? Yeah. Yes. Oh, really? yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 White. It needs to be struck out. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure that the. I. I. Um, I, agree, I agree with the sentiment in. 6.2.5.3, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure that that's the right words. Those are the right, right words that we, um, like you said, Nick, you know, landscaped areas shall be negotiated with CBDC. I don't think that's. Yeah, I mean, that's what will happen. But, yeah, um, yeah the, also the. If you strike out the word robust, you might have less argument. <laughs> I don't know where it says. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no. It's a, a landscape, a landscape buffer. buffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only problem is it doesn't sound like it has any teeth. Shall be negotiated with. Well, if we say X and they say Y, who's got this final decision? Yeah, I think that whole yeah, sentence that goes sentence. away. Just yeah. say um, landscape it's period. shall be provided. Yeah. Just say uh, the landscape plan shall be provided and reviewed. By well, it's understood know. that they're coming in for a review, right? Yeah. So you, you could say in accordance with South Main Street design best, best practices. practices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with that. It's understood yeah. that we're going to be discussing it, negotiating it. Yes. It. Yeah. Do we know what the South Main Street design best practices say about a landscape between a residential it's area? robust. <laughs> <laughs> and can we reference those in zoning? Yes. Certainly. Right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if the town council I don't know would be if we too can. happy with yeah. that. Yeah. We can probably not. Hold it up. I'm guessing we can. Probably not. But we can use uh, if there's something in the master plan that talks about it. You could use a master plan as a guidance document yeah. during site plan review. Well, you don't have to we, say we did didn't it. Didn't we add a landscape provision under zoning? And we redid the zoning? Didn't we plan? add it to the investor? <coughs> that we just doing recently. I thought we had the whole section of landscape. Yeah, right here, landscape standard 6.5. Maybe it's just reference that. Yeah, we can. There. Either reference that or say nothing. Say nothing. Yeah. 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 Say nothing is better. Yeah, right. It's mm -hmm. cleaner. Works. <laughs> so do we want to say a residence district and your use? Mm, where? Well, yeah. Well, in that, that same paragraph. Same paragraph. It says adjacent to a residence district, which means that, for example, behind Gulf Street, mm -hmm. there'd be no consideration for that, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we had that whole discussion. It's not a district, it's a use, potentially. So yeah. let's just make sure that we're getting all those properties, the districts and the uses. Well, if you say use, I think you're covered. OK. Root neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's not going to be street. Well, how about if, forget about that whole paragraph, if in the landscape standards that we include, we just, um, we just include um, in addition to multifamily dwelling projects, include um, multi-use, mixed-use. Mixed. I'm sorry, mixed-use. 
Number 651. 651. And you're saying you just strike six two five yeah. three entire, because this says this says it all. <laughs> Landscape design plan shall be repaired. Yeah. Blah, 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 side wonderful. yards. So. Covering 6.5 covers these buffered edges. Mm, I think no, so. No reference to buffers. I don't see that in there. No so the side yards. Required shall be landscaped, such side yards shall be planted with a combination of grass shrubs. So we do have in 6414, there shall be a landscape buffer strip of a minimum width of 25 feet along the full abutting length of a residential district. And get added in in the business A and C district. But is that, again, too restrictive? Feet. Well, right now that's only for business C district. So you're saying you want to add it for business A as well? Right. She had proposed in, or I did. I don't know if the number works here. Because right. Of the yeah. That's what I was wondering too. So I wouldn't add it there. But I think I might. I might leave six two five three. It just says that in business A district, in addition to the landscape, property vacant to a residential use. Residential use. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. We know where to go. And then we already. Yeah. That's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. If possible, I'd like to put something like six foot buffer minimum, just enough to make sure there's something there. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you know that's the right number? Is that a design guidelines paper? When you say the right number, you mean is it too big, too small? Right. I'm just saying, well, put a number in there. That's why I said a minimum. I would say six feet would be enough for you to plant something there. Shrubs, bushes, even trees. As opposed to bringing it up to the edge and putting up a fence. Which I want to say somewhere else was allowing a fence if there wasn't enough side yardage. Was it six five? Yeah, six five two. Side yards shall be planted with a combination of grass shrubs, but they may have a fence if there's not enough room. I want to say we're just getting into the weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Really getting into the weeds. <laughs> Six feet's about the right size strip you can need for any kind of a tree to grow in. Mm. Let's include that as a, oh. as a mm. possibility. Uh, yeah, as a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think it's getting late and yeah. I think yeah. we're yeah. reaching yeah. the end of our yeah. thoughtful yeah. comments, right? Well, perhaps. I mean, what do you for a six yeah, five one, the six feet language, the six five two. Yep. It's a appropriate and sustainable landscaping and design. Does that mean zero um, watering, or does that mean that it will live forever? It means that it won't die instantly. Yeah, sustainable. It could mean yeah, like zero things. Yeah. So it could be tough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, whatever. What's the thought? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Irrigated plastic. 
I have to start. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Later on in the, in the six five, though, David, it talks about if they draw, if they die or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the idea is that the landscaping is supposed to be sustainable, and so yeah. if they come back with all kinds of invasive or inappropriate species, we should be aware of that. Okay. We can get more into the table of dimensional controls next time. Yeah. 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 All right. Great. I think we made some good progress. Yeah, really very good progress. So wait, before we leave that though, now after, um, and while we're still thinking about it, um, you know, we we table the. Um, for the the um, lots in two districts. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts about that? Of whether that's um, that's any more applicable or less applicable now that we sort of went through and wrapped our heads around the mixed use component. It's, a, it's fine if no one has any thoughts on it. Oh, yeah. The only thought I have is if it applies back to the uh, buffer between a residential use. That if you're going to extend it 30 feet out, that 30 feet that a resident digital. had a digital protection from the business they use, so you'd want to make sure you have a buffer between them. And I think once we get into our rear yard setback and the number we want to define for that, we'll have more of an idea. You're right. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 <laughs> I wasn't oh, sure. Right. I, was, I was actually making a motion. Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank sure. you. Right. That was great. Yeah.